Oh gosh, I hit record and we're going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is new. Oh lordy. Okay, well, welcome. I almost said welcome to the Dead Kings podcast. That's not the podcast name. It is welcome to the Buckethead <laughs> podcast. I am here today, this day of all days, with the mother of skulls, the keeper of skulls, the breaker of skulls. She is a bartender. She is a personal trainer. She is the folk fabricator. <laughs> not the folk fabricator. <laughs> it's fucking skull keeper. <laughs> we take it, take it serious. I'm, I'm just trying. <laughs> what type of introduction was that? That, that was, was the best introduction, introduction I'll ever get. get. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, no, welcome. I, I tried to pay raise. Um, <laughs> Today we are we are chatting about something. It's basically the thing that crafted our friendship. Really, well, not really. It it, it did is Call did. of Duty cosplay. Now I know there's like a huge thing on Call of Duty, the COD community. And I got. I feel like I need to just say that there's two different sides of the COD community. I see a lot of people hashtag COD community in their cosplay stuff, and there's the COD cosplay community. And then the COD community that's like gaming and all that stuff that doesn't care about us. Um, Mm -hmm. (laughs) So this is like a deep dive first person look into what has happened. The rise and fall of COD cosplay since Modern Warfare 2 had dropped. If you all aren't familiar, excuse me, with Skullkeeper, her links will be down in the description below. And she's on screen right there. She can't see it because she can't see the screen. But her, her that's me and her on the main screen. Cool. Aww. Yeah, it's us. We're here. Um, So, Skull, do you want to introduce yourself and kind of just let loose and just say how, how you, because we got the topics right here, how your beginning and your intro to cosplaying goes? Because I don't think a lot of people know. Yeah. yeah um, um, so, so, hello. I'm Skullkeeper. Skullkeeper. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the keeper of skulls. Um, I so I didn't even plan on starting to cosplay when I started cosplaying. I had zero intentions of becoming a TikTok cosplayer. So, um, I used to model all the time, and I had this idea when Modern Warfare uh, Two came out. Um, for those of you who don't know me, who I mean, where have you been? But um, I <laughs> exactly. That's what I, I am. <laughs> I have more of a muscular build, so it, it's hard. It was hard for me to cosplay or to to take on a character that is mostly a feminine, traditional feminine esque character, um, because I do not look traditional feminine esque. So mm. I. Usually do when I am attracted to doing a costume or a cosplay, I am attracted usually to the male characters, and I like how I can spin them off to give them. I basically gossify ghosts. So um, I I was like, I'm going to do something that I haven't seen anybody do, and I'm going to make a female version of Ghost from Call of Duty, and I'm just going to go hire a photographer, and we're going to go take some pictures, because I feel like this would be a really fun idea. So um, I hired a photographer. The getting of the mask situation was really tough around that time, because there was, like, two people making masks at the time. Um, uh, I, could, I could get into that. Um, I had to run for my money on my first mask. I never got it. Um, and then uh, found well, another one. Well, go ahead. T- tell the story. Tell the freaking story. Uh, oh, so, so there was this guy who was making masks in the beginning, and he made um, cosplay and airsoft masks. So he was, like, one of the first people that started making, um, like, ghost masks. So I, it, they were relatively cheap-ish at the time. And I say cheap-ish. They were like, you know, 80 something dollars, but I was like, I had this photo shoot planned out for like next week. I need to get a DHL expedited shipping. And that was like another $80. So it ended up almost costing me about $200 by the, uh, by the time I purchased the mask and the shipping. God. <laughs> yeah. 
So uh, it gets really close to the time of the photo shoot, and my mask is still had just a label created. And um, so I ended up messaging the seller. The seller's like, I'm sorry, DHL didn't pick up the parcel today. Um, I will, you know, I, I, I'm really upset. I'm going to henceforward, um, I'm going to have them pick it up tomorrow, and I'm going to call them, whatever. Two days go by. <laughs> Mask is still not moving. I finally am like, hey, I got to prolong this photo shoot. I'm like, like which, which is costing, costing me money, money and, and I, I had, had to take, take off my job twice. No. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, so I'm, I'm a bartender, so I don't get paid a lot hourly. I get paid by, you know, tips. So, so I lost two days worth of tips. tips. Finally, ultimately, ultimately, this guy ended up telling me that he ended up going, going out of business. Mm. And he was like, like you, you can, can dispute, dispute the charge with PayPal. And... Disputing charges with PayPal is a nightmare, so I didn't. And you, I've been whooping myself for that one anyway. Um, ultimately, this guy took my money and ran. Um, and then he has, since, he has since then opened up another shop under a different name. So, where, where was it based um, on? Uh, it was overseas somewhere. I wish I knew. It was like a name I really honestly didn't know at the time. Um, I didn't know if maybe it had something to do with um, possibly some... Wars that, that were breaking out in that area, area around that time. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. So, um, um, anyway, found, found this other guy who had a, a lot more expensive, expensive mask, but I was like, like I'm running out of time. time. He, he was, was able, able to get it out to me ASAP, got me the mask. That's where the traditional jawbone came from. And then I went and did this photo shoot. Um, and I ended up like loving it. I loved how I felt in this character. Um, I, I love just, just everything, everything about it. it. And this, this is, is like really cheap, like <laughs> Rue 21, 21 cargo camo joggers, um, a black Amazon crop top. And uh, I bought like this really cheap, like chest harness with um, super cheap winter boots. Like everything on this costume, other than the mask was just like, what can I grab within this week? Mm hmm. Um, but I just loved how I felt in it. The pictures turned out awesome. Um, and so I was like, well, so pictures came through, loved it. And then I'm like, you know, I have this mask. I have this outfit. I really like this. Call of Duty's trending. I'm like, why don't I just try this weird TikTok thing? Mm -hmm. And I made one video and it was somewhat well received. And then I just kept making videos because I was like, oh, this is actually kind of fun. I like this. And um, it was a way to get my creativity out at the time. And then uh, and that's uh, that's the start of that. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> the sigh of knowing what's coming. Oh, gosh. Well, that's. I didn't like. I think I remember knowing that you that you had two masks in the beginning, um, or you had bought one. But I didn't know that like the dude was like, "I just scammed you of a hundred dollars," like, and then just dip. He really did. And what's sad is there's also someone else in the community. We we bought the same mask from the same maker at the same time, and they also did not get their mask. Ugh. So, so I was not the only one. This guy, I think, had it planned out. So, ew, that's mm. that's happened to me before, and I hate, I absolutely hate when that happens. That you like, for me, it was a Star Wars helmet. Brady and I had both bought them. They came completely shanked. They came broken. Things were missing. I reached back oh. out to the company. Um, the the dude replied and said, "Oh, hey, I'm uh, on vacation right now, but I'll get back to you as soon as I'm off vacation." All the accounts gone. I was blocked on everything. Then I I went to my ah. I went to my backup because um, I have on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, I have backup accounts. So I go to my backup mm -hmm. and I search him and I find him and I'm like, bro, what the heck? Um, so I reach out to him now under his new name and he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know who you are. And I'm like, it's basically that you're using the same logo, dude. Like. <laughs> And you're out of the wow. same place. Etsy needs to get a handle on that shit. They really do. So, 
for those of you who don't know, I'll make mine. I'll make because I've already told a bunch of people this. Skull stuff is way more important to know. Mine essentially was when Ghost dropped when he came back in Modern Warfare 2019. I was not the biggest fan of his look, but uh, the voice acting is what got it for me. I loved the, that that freaking British Batman voice. Mm-hmm. Um, I I'm still a I'm still a Modern Warfare 2 2009 Ghost purist. So don't don't come at me. I feel like Ghost has the Boba Fett treatment, where if you're not an OG fan, you really aren't a fan. And if you like, yeah. If you like anything other than what he was, they're gonna rip your head off. Yeah. Yep. Indeed. Like <laughs> goodness gracious. Anyway, <laughs> so I had actually done a version of Ghost, like the 2009 version, and I didn't like how that looked. Scrapped that. 2019 came along. It was growing on me. I think it was the Jawbone skin or Dreadwood. I think it was. I can't remember. Black multicam. I did that one. Wore it out once, um, got shut down by the cops, and then I was like, oh I was like, I was like, okay, well, I'm never doing this again. So I put it away. Um, then whatever, what was it, 2022? Yeah, it was 2022 hits. I think yes, that's the year it came out. I don't remember. 2020 Modern Warfare 2 2022 comes out. It's uh. Halloween time, I'm like, hey, I got some stuff because I had been doing heavy on Boba stuff forever. I wanted to break stuff up, and I dropped my first ghost video, and he. this gets us into the next little category is first time dropping your video and your first time's going viral. Ooh. So do you remember uh. your first video? Oh yeah. Um, hang on. Let me get on the the thing. Right. Oh, so my first video is actually a series of pictures from my photo shoot, and I think my first video was literally me in the bathroom, sh- like doing a slow pan up of this <laughs> costume. Um. So that one. That one was. There, it had gotten some attention, but it wasn't anything super crazy. Um, and uh, since then, the pictures of the original photo shoot were taken down about six months later because TikToks realized there was pew pews in them. And uh, so they, yeah, so I got a nice little, nice little slap on the wrist and was like, don't do that. And uh, I, that was, I, that was when I, uh, the day, the day I was, I was like, like I, I will not do any sort of even fake weapons, weapons on TikTok, TikTok because, because they, they went, went back, back six months prior and got me. <gasps> that's true. Mm-hmm. I that's true. I hardly see you with guns in your. I I didn't notice that. <laughs> I never. Whoa! It it, it sucks because, because like it feels like how do you do a tactical character without like guns? And uh, but I I did for a while and like sometimes you'll see me. Like, like I might get a little saucy one day and put a put a fake pistol in the holster, but other than that, um, a it was it was, it was I was so scared when they gave me because I got multiple strikes because it was multiple pictures, mm-hmm. and uh, so I was like I'm gonna lose my account, and I had built it up to I think like 10k by then, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't want. You know, just didn't want it to happen again. But yeah, yeah my, my first my first video was probably one that I already had taken it down. It wasn't anything crazy. Um, but the first time going viral, viral was this. It's dumb because I shouldn't have gotten the attention that I got doing it. Um, it's literally me. Uh, still, still with, with jawbone, jawbone. And, and it's it's, it's, it's actually still pinned in uh, my uh, my account. account. It's, it's like the third, third video, but it's, it's literally me moving. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't even want to say dancing, dancing but, but moving to uh, putting on the Ritz. I know this. Um, one. <laughs> I know this. <laughs> <video. laughs> and I think it was everyone's first realization that I was a a muscular lady, and they were like, "Oh, I kind of see what she's got going on here." 
it makes sense. Because this is like the video where people were like reposting and they were like, this is female ghost. Like, this is this is what he would look like if he was a female, blah, blah, blah. So uh, that's what got me a lot of attention. And to that day, that video has uh, 1.3 million views. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, 30.5K shares and uh, 316.5K likes. That is my most popular video. Crap. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's, I guess the question is, like, how do you feel knowing that a million people have looked at you <laughs> essentially. <laughs> it, it's like crazy. I remember when I uploaded that video. Like, I was literally getting out of the gym and I was like, well, it's like two ish o'clock. It's around that time that I could probably upload something. Because at that time, I was really big as to following most popular times. And at that time, that was around my most active time. And I just remember refreshing maybe like five minutes after I had posted it and just seeing that I was at like several thousand likes already. Mm. And I was like, this isn't real life. Like, what is going on? And, um, you know what I just realized? What's up? That isn't even my most, that wasn't the first time I went viral. My first time I went viral was a video that I don't have up anymore, or it, it might be all the way at the bottom. But it was around Christmas-ish time, and uh, I did <laughs> literally this video of me. Yeah, I think I had taken it down because uh, TikTok had decided they didn't like um, my audio anymore, and it's muted. Oh, my God. By then. It's, it's pointless. So, um yeah, so I think that video is down at this point, but it was literally just me uh, moving. Again, this wasn't even like a dance. Moving to the beat of this uh, mix of songs and me sitting down, flipping a knife around in my hand and, st and stepping on the camera. And that was, I think, the one that got me the most attention. And then it was the putting on the wrist that had uh, several uh, million views. Judas Priest. So... Yeah. When you made these videos, because I feel like I got, I got to go off for a second, right? When, mm -hmm. when we first started this, like, I don't really remember seeing any other Call of Duty cosplays. And I'm not saying that to be like, oh, we were the first or whatnot. But, like, the people who really started doing COD cosplays when Modern Warfare 2 was, like, hot... There was no real template for like weeks of what to do. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. what when you put those videos together, what was like you're like, you're like, OK, I'm going to do this and this and this and this. Or did you just kind of press play, listen to the music and do your thing? I, I, I just, just kind, kind of pressed, pressed play, play and, and listened, listened to, to the music. music. Like, like, I knew that I had to kind of keep this gruff character, because, yes, I am doing a female version of this character, but I am still trying to channel what Ghost would act like as a female. So, like, in the, the original one where I step on the camera, it's literally me... And, and I, I think, think my, my caption was something along the lines of how you're a shadow and I just caught you or something, something like that. Mm. And uh, so, so I, I, I went, went along with those lines at the time. And, um, oh, no, my, my Xbox decided it wanted to tell me that I'm timing out. Uh -oh. um, yeah, so, no, I, I, just, I just have to move it. So, um, no, that, that one was kind of like, all right, how would I... How do I add cool music and fun music that ultimately I just liked? There was no, I didn't pay attention to trending sounds. Um, I just saw the song pop up a couple times, really liked it. There was actually a creator that had used it for his video at the time, and I was like, I want to use that song, and so I did. As far as putting on the Ritz goes, I don't know. <laughs> that one, I have zero idea i just think i was like feeling myself that day and uh just decided to 
do a little do a little dancey poo. A little dancey poo for the people. Yeah, well, a little, that, a little spice. spice. Well, that's the just looking back, and I know we've talked about this like a million times, like, but I still feel nostalgic about it because as much shite as we got and how much the things that people said in comments, it was because like it was innocent, if you will. Like you could you fe- yeah. you, you felt you saw a song, you felt the, what you wanted to do in the in the in the video. You just did it and then you uploaded it. And mm-hmm. there wasn't really like, oh well here's the trend of what people are doing now. Here's the trend of this. But then trends came around and you're like, oh I could do this, but as ghost. You know? Yeah. Um yeah. it wasn't so much now like this 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 herd mentality of everyone's going to do the same the same video, the same angles, the same this over and over and over again and almost everyone has the same costume. Um mm-hmm. it was different. It, it it was different and I think like my my well at my first video the sound got yoinked and I was pissed. It oh. was it was that what's the word, Captain? I think I caught you bad. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, the nostalgia! Oh, that was like ghost theme song at right? the time. <laughs> and all it was is panning up from my first version of a ghost was as as you can see in the picture. It was that mask that I'm wearing in this picture. It was this matrix armor, and then just a hoodie I had laying around, some gloves, um, and I literally just put my finger up to my mouth, and then I just walked through the camera. Cool. I like I uploaded it on the way home from a Halloween function. The drive was 30 <laughs> minutes. I get home and I like before like what I used to do when with my Boba Fett stuff was I'll just upload and then walk away and then oh snap TikTok and then you know go check. Well my phone this is when I had notifications on my phone. And it was just going off like what the heck is going on like am I getting spam light cuz yes that was a thing back then. Mm-hmm. Um but so I open my phone and I'm like 10,000 like what the what is happening and I see all the comments and a lot of them were very very unhinged for the time and I'm <laughs> sitting there like what what do I do what what are people saying like what is going on so naturally I delete the video no um <laughs> <laughs> So, like, I'm responding to comments, and they're like, this is back when, like, I tried to read every single one. And I don't, it's not that I don't do it now. Like, obviously, views are just in the dirt now, and it's, 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 it's life. It's humbling, but it's life. Um, but keeping up with every single one and whatnot, it, it definitely wasn't a good thing to do because you're reading everyone, and some of mm-hmm. them weren't very nice. Um, hmm. but now let us, I guess, let us, let us get to, uh, the thirst traps. So this is, this is a huge, a huge thing within, within the, the call of duty cosplay community. Um, so to me, a thirst trap is something that's going to invoke a physical reaction from somebody, i.e., like a, a beating chest, you know, like, oh, Jesus, or something like that. <laughs> and there were times, and I, I made I made a good, good couple of thirst traps, and even before this podcast episode, I went back and I looked at some of them that are privated now, and I'm like, gee, zus. But, and I'm, we're, we're going to, I'm going to call them out this time. The thirst traps, I, while I don't see them as much anymore, and I don't really think they're a thing because we are now in 2024, and who cares about COD anymore? <laughs> but <laughs> they have went from a simple wink or a simple hand on the thigh or a simple look or whatnot to full on intercourse with a phone. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. And Indeed. To me, that's that's not a thirst trap. That's hub content. 
<laughs> like I don't I don't want to have this holier than thou mentality. I don't really mean to. If that's the kind of content you put out, congratulations. I'm glad you're having fun. I just don't want it in my face, please. I I, I, I feel violated. Um, please. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I, I was going back and like I said, I was looking at the stuff that I had put up, and I'm like. It was this th- like compared to the stuff that's out now, is this a thirst trap? Like, a lot of it was staring, and head tilts, and like there was, it was like I thought it was funny. I didn't see it as a thirst trap, but you know the internet doing what the internet does. Um, mm-hmm. It was the keep messing around and we'll end up like this, and it's a ghost ec- execution. And people are like, well, if you're down, I'm down. I'm like, I'm like, it's like, I'd look back at you and thank you while you did it. I'm like, sir. (laughs) And that, that was the fun part really for me, at least for the air quotes, thirst traps at the time were that people were just saying unhinged, just crackhead things really. Mm -hmm. And, and then I'll ask you skull. What did your comment sections look like? Oh, <laughs> oh my, my gosh. gosh. Um, they they were, were the exact same, same thing, thing where, like, you had the yes mommies, the this, the that, you know, and then there was the occasional, like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> how did that make it through any sort of guideline filter? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but, like, they, it was so uncommon back then to get, like, unhinged stuff that I would just reply back to them with, like, you know, the eye emoji or, like, you know, something to joke around back. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, an, it was just, it was, when you got that occasional weird comment, it was kind of more so funny. Um because the creativity of people back in those days was insane. The comments, the creative comments. Because I know me and you would go back and forth like, they said what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, um, oh, they, the, I'm just, I'm trying to, to ex- remember exactly what happened then. But like you said, they were really creative. They came up with new things, and then it started becoming more and more of the same thing. You're like, oh, I gotcha. Okay. And this is back in the days when you could pin comments. So it would mm, like, you yeah. could put someone to be like, Hey, this, this is the, this is the pinnacle. Y'all got to match this. Um, <laughs> like this is the standard. Um, <laughs> but then there was, there was stuff like, I, I don't know how your stuff went, but there was, People talking about certain moisture levels of certain things. And oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> crying and the thighs. And, <laughs> and, and yeah, we're we're not gonna get in depth here, but then here, this is where the unfortunate part of the conversation is: is this turns to things getting serious, as to the point of people not knowing when to chill the heck out. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, a lot of, and I've seen, I've seen this within the COD cosplay community a lot, a ton. And so many people are like, Hey, there's people behind the masks. There's this, there's that 90% of us are just people who got off a long day at work and want to interact with some friends. That's what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you get those people, and we I know we've both had it, where it's the same person commenting the same thing over and over and over again. And yes. I've had it to the point where people also, like, be getting into my DMs mm. and coming to the point of privacy and wanting a face reveal and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. When it comes to a face reveal skull, what is your feeling on the subject? Like when when you when you decided not to show your face and decided like, hey, I am incognitous. What, yeah, like, so uh, it, it was, was honestly, honestly a lot of it was, was honestly talking 
to you. Um, because I would go, I was going back and forth as to like, do I do it? Do I say, oh, if you get me to this many, uh, this many followers, I'll give you like, do I do that? And then the, as the comments started getting more and more intense and I have had some really weird interactions with people unprovoked. I have had, you know, people call me things that I'm absolutely not. Um, I started to kind of feel more and more uncomfortable with unveiling who I, you know, am um, and due to privacy. Um, and uh, so I remember talking with you about it and you're like, oh, you know, for me, it's like, you know, it's privacy. And I'm like, yeah, well, yeah, sure. But, but then, then, like, like over, over time, time, I was like, like oh, man, I, I really understand what he's getting at. Like, I really understand what he's saying because it can get scary. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so definitely uh, there is no face reveal plan for the future. Probably never will be. I think I will always be a masked creator. Um, to be honest, I kind of find it fun because it lets people be imaginative as to what they want me to, to be, be for them, them. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I just, I, I don't, don't want to, you, you know, know how they, they say, it, you know, in Disney with the mascot, mascot and they're like, don't, don't ruin the magic, magic. Like, like, it's basically it's that, like, I don't, don't want to ruin the magic for anybody, anybody. They, they already know what I sound like, and they can go from there. Exactly, 100%, 100%, and it's just, I guess, a PSA, because I don't know where the COD cosplay stuff will be even like two months from now. Because I feel I feel every single week there's something that everyone's like, we as a community have failed, and we as a this, and we as a that. But mm -hmm. the one constant I feel is that if, some, if you scroll through a majority of someone's videos and they do not have their face revealed, don't ask them. Like that's that's yeah. that's a thing. Like enjoy what you're seeing, interact with what you're seeing. There's a wall there, there's a barrier there, there's a boundary there. That obviously they don't want you knowing what they look like. Um yeah. And it's to me it's it's uh, it's almost like basically a universal thing. I feel I don't have it in my bio, but I see so many people whether they be Mandalorian cosplayers, Star or uh, Call of Duty cosplayers, Halo cosplayers, like they have to have, apparently they have to have it in their bio where it's like, don't ask for a face reveal. Um, and I'm like, it shouldn't, yeah. that shouldn't be the case. Um, when it comes to back to the, the subject of thirst traps, I wanted to touch on a situation, right? So there has been multiple situations within the COD cosplay community. And I, I, I say this as if like, I'm, heavily involved with it but honestly i'm not really a part of the cod cosplay community these days not by like mm -hmm. because like it's just since the stuff with vincent and we'll get to all that here in a minute i feel like it's just there's a complete separation between me and that side of the cosplay community um mm -hmm. and it's not like i hate people over there or whatnot there's still several people i still i still fucks with who who are involved with that. But since I made, we like we made our videos addressing the situation. Um, I feel like that's all I got to say. And I feel every week there's something else happening as a, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm, if I'm overboarding you, um, but I, I'll just get this out as a, uh, a creator. You want to stay as safe as you can. And that means mm -hmm. taking it into your own hands. I've seen too many people who want to blame everybody but themselves when it comes to inappropriate things being said to them or whatnot. You have more power than you think on TikTok and Instagram and all that stuff. There are plenty of ways you can stop certain comments being said, certain things, certain phrases being commented. You can also, Indeed. yes, you can also limit who sees your stuff. It's, I'm sorry, but like, as I like do it, I've been doing cosplay and been doing this for 12 years. And 
at the end of the day, the person who's going to constantly look out for you is you. It's going to fall onto you to keep yourself safe, to keep the boundaries up, and to know exactly how far you should tow a line. Because if you throw something out to the masses and they do what they want to do with it, and you're like, well, I don't want you doing that. Don't, don't, don't say that. Don't do this. Don't do that. There's one or two opportunity or opportunities, one or occurrences where that may happen is like when you're first starting out and when you're coming back from a big break or, yeah. a, long, or a long break that you've got those walls down a little bit and you're getting into the groove of things. The first time should be in a, 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 a learning experience. Um, for me, it was with the Boba Fett stuff. I was getting a lot of Boba Fett comments and stuff like that. And people just criticizing the crap out of my costume. And it what to me, it wasn't really annoying or uh, it wasn't, it wasn't hurtful or I wasn't getting like, I wasn't sad about it or, you know, it was just like, I'm seeing it so much that it's like, it's not unique anymore. It's not like, it's not funny. Essentially. I'm like, it's, if you're going to call me Boba thick or call me Boba fat, say it in a different way that is going to get a chuckle out of me. Um, Mm -hmm. Because like back in the professional wrestling days, I heard all sorts of things. So I I can hear a lot and tolerate a lot. Um, But then it's just to a point where it becomes annoying. Other people, it's different. What do you, because obviously how I've seen you, like I've been in your lives, I've seen you, how you handle your lives. To me being a dude, I can't really speak to the chickadees. How, what would your, what has your experience been and what is your advice to people who are like, uh, people just keep saying things to me and making me feel a certain way. And what would you say? Oh man. So my big thing that I got in the beginning was, is that a, is that a woman? No, no, man, that's, that's a dude. dude. That's, that's a dude. A dude. I, that, that was, was my big thing, thing was I was, I, because I have a muscular build, people were automatically like, that's a dude. So that was my constant thing is people asking me what my gender was, trying to figure it out. Confu- that they were con- I just started, honestly, like in the beginning, I'm going to say it hurts a little bit because I was still getting new to the fact that I'm like, um, you know, they can't see my face. They can't tell that I'm a girl. And I also was, you know, trying to also be comfortable with my own body. And, I, and I've and since come a long way, but also becoming okay with the fact that I'm like, yes, I do not have the stereotypical female build, and that's okay. And honestly, Skullkeeper helped me, um, like, embody that more. Mm-hmm. And... Um, so, so I would just, just reply, reply back, back to people and just be like, uh, guess, <laughs> sick guess. Like guess. it got to the, it did, it got to the point where I was like, if you're going to ask dumb questions, I'm going to make you play the game too. So people, the people would be like, I would sit there and I'd be like, you'll figure it out. You got this. You'll figure it out. You'll figure it out. I think I've seen those comments. Oh yeah. So that was, that was a lot during lives, um, and, and such. And I still would get them in comments, but, um, I guess my response to that is just be confident in who you are. And, you know, and that's a lot easier said than done, but we are also putting ourselves out there as a spectacle of entertainment and you're going to be, um, you're going to be criticized. There's, if you have a lot of eyes on you, there's going to be a lot of hate on you. And you have to know that by putting yourself out there, you're also opening yourself up to criticisms that might hurt you. And if you are a type of person who might be a lot more sensitive to things like that, you might have to think twice about maybe being a content creator because you're going to get a lot of it. So my biggest thing is start come to terms with who you are, be okay, be okay with, with who you are. Be okay, okay with putting that out there. And then when people are just say dumb stuff, just you know, play play it dumb back. Just be confident and stand like firm and that this is you know this doesn't bother me because I know who I am. Um, 
and that, that that's that just, just my, my advice, advice i guess is a little bit more bold but i i you just in this type of work we literally and i say work we dress up for fun and i don't know if you can hear blaze screaming in the background but hardly um <laughs> not really <laughs> but we um we we're dressing up as characters for fun on the internet you have to be able to take some punches and um despite how annoying they are and i think that's just the best advice i have is just to be okay with it exactly 100 percent. and it's to, to kind of backpack off of that and just add one or two more things also with the uh, with being a creator you also have to know what you're putting out um the okay. type of content you're putting out to know what type of reception or what type of response that's going to garner if you're if you're putting out super crazy spicy content you're going to get super crazy spicy responses. Now, yeah. this isn't me saying you did it to yourself or you asked for it or whatnot. It's just know what you're doing and know that not just because you may think to yourself, hey, I'm not going to say X, Y, and Z to someone who's making the same content as I am. That doesn't mean other people won't. Just take worry about your safety first before being like before putting trust in people because it's the internet. I don't trust you, Skull. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> the second thing is also have your privacy. There's been a, a situation that has happened recently where a creator, it's it was more so like a hobby for them. So they had a lot of their personal stuff, face reveal children dogs cats all that stuff on the internet as well as some spicy stuff and what are trolls gonna do when they see that sensitive material and then they see you doing something that they don't like <laughs> limit what people know about you keep that barrier if you're even if you are showing your face you can still have some sort of security when it comes to like i really i don't really put my family members in my stuff i try not to show too much of my house i try not to even like disclose my state for the most part um people only need to know about me what i want them to know about me uh yeah and so just again like it's be careful. Just be careful. Obviously, yeah. people shouldn't be going out saying stupid shit, being assholes, being dicks, and all that stuff. But it's gonna happen. And it's 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 on you to make sure you're taken care of. Yes, friends, people can rally to you and, and help you out, and that's what they're there for. And that's great and that's amazing. But it all it all starts with you. And I yeah. I, I don't want I don't oh go ahead. What were you gonna say? No, I kind of like, I, I was going to make this point because you, you brought up, um, you know, a little bit earlier about how there are so many ways to protect yourself on TikTok, especially um, like, you know, these people that are like, I don't want minors talking to me, then limit, you, you know, there's a button that says only 18 plus can see my content. You can hit that button. Um, and those are, you know, people that are, not, 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 not lying, not lying about, about their age on their account, account. Um, but, but there's ways for you to protect, protect like yourself and, you know, to, to limit your accessibility. accessibility. Um, and uh, without, without getting, getting deeper, deeper like into that, I feel like people don't, they, they just, just want to put it out there that, that no, I know my content's 18 plus, plus but they, they just don't want to go the extra mile because Maybe, Maybe some, some of their, their audience, audience isn't of age, and that's what's bringing them traction. Yeah. So, and, and that's actually that's <laughs> actually the next part in the topic is the MDNI, which stands for Minors Do Not Interact. Um, mm. There's been a huge, huge issue with that subject, and I have the the thing that really sucks about it is up until I did Ghost. I didn't have to put 18 plus in my stuff. 
For me, call me an old head. Call me, call me crazy old man bucket. But <laughs> 18 plus to me was like reserved for people who were making spicier content, making wilder content. It wasn't for someone who was just trying to put out some some co- cosplay content, some tactical whatever, and it wasn't to to keep the children away. It was to let adults know what kind of stuff you were making. And so for me, I, the thing that sucks, right. is cause I, I, I don't be, I, I don't have to put minors do not interact in every single one of my posts because that's not what my stuff is. My stuff is 18 plus if I, and really a lot of the time, cause I know so many people stress about this. So many people freak out and they're like, so many minors are this and that, and this and that. Da, da, da. And I'm like, if I see it and I see them interacting with myself with my stuff or I, I catch them liking something, I block them. Like literally when I go to respond to comments, I'll tap on the profile first, see what they're about. A lot of the times if they don't have an age in there and it's, it's a, a comment that's like, Oh, Hey, I like your cosplay. I'll say, thank you. But if it's something a bit w- more wild, like, you, like even just you have beautiful eyes or something like that, I'll go and I'll be like, okay, what are you, who are you? Um, but other than that, like I can't, as creators, we can't control who hits the follow button. Like we can't, like we are like, yes, you have the setting of 18 plus and all that stuff. It comes to the point where, and this is, this is going to be a hot take. This is going to be a hot take. Keep the children safe. And to me, that starts with the goddamn parents. Mm Mm-hmm. That's to me, that's where it starts. I do everything in my power that I can do to keep them damn rugrats away from my stuff. <laughs> but also, I'm not on my phone 24 hours a day. I work a job outside of this. I'm not on my phone for hours at a time. So I don't see every single person who's following me every second of the day. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I catch it if I catch it. And if I don't, I can't sit there like. <laughs> I don't know what my follow count is. I really don't care anymore at the, like, like now I don't really care. Um, I'm at 138.8. I cannot go through 130 plus people and find out who's who. And I know a lot of people stress because they feel like that's what they should do. And if that, if it gets to the point where I need to be doing that and monitoring stuff so closely that I'm no longer worried about interacting with the people that I want here and creating the stuff that I want to create, the motherfucker, I'm gone. <laughs> like, yeah, then there's, there's no, no point. point. Exactly. So, like, obviously, do everything you can to keep the Rugrats at bay. Be checking all the goddamn people you respond to. Now, for me, for I want to say... I want to say for the better part of a year, I haven't really had the thirsty, crazy comments um, because I have shifted my content to something else. Um, It's no longer the short, spicy, hey, whatever. Like, again, I don't think my stuff was really filled that much. Like, it was a little dip of hot sauce every every now and again. Um, Mm -hmm. But also, like, sometimes, like, there was, it was the the Punisher one I did. What are you doing? Uh." Um... (laughs) <laughs> it was that one and people were losing they're like why did this awaken something in me i'm like it's not supposed to <laughs> like, good lord above um is there anything else you want to add to the miners do not interact stuff um yeah uh i mean uh, i don't know you kind of did touch on everything um I I did get to the point, you know, in the beginning, I wasn't, I just thought TikTok was an 18 plus app. So, you know, there, I wish I would have known that from the start that that was not how this app works. Um, but moving forward, when I found out it wasn't, I would do the exact same thing where you would do, where I would look and be like, oh, they, they either don't have an age in their bio at all, or it says that they are under the age of 18. So therefore this person is blocked or therefore, you know, I'll interact with the person underneath that says they're 24, but this person is just no interaction. Um, I, I, to me as well, my stuff wasn't necessarily ever made to be 
I mean, when I went into this in general, I I wasn't there to appease to the kids. That wasn't that's not the audience I want to reach. Um, so where I was, where was I going with this? Um, basically, uh, the big thing was you know just checking and stuff from there and making sure I was appeasing to the audience that I wanted to and and um not interacting, interacting with, with people, people that, 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 that I didn't. Um, I did end up putting in my bio at 1.18 plus. So I, don't, I kept the way the minors do not interact thing. People don't follow it anyway. Um, people don't read the bios. Um, really don't. You know, people are like, they're like, oh, it's in my bio. I'm like, people don't. If they, if they just saw your video, most people, if you end up in their FYP and they see your video and it awakens something in them at the time, they're not going to go to your profile. They're going to instantly do a thirst comment and then maybe check you out after that. So, like you said, I think it all begins with parents also just need to be parents. Monitor what your kids are watching for sure. Um uh, on uh, so, so much, much these days, like, you, we, we do, do have, have to like, look out for the kids. kids. Um, but, but at the same, same time, it is not up to content, content creators to be watching out for your kids. kids. We are not babysitters. Mm -hmm. You have to, you know, definitely monitor what what is accessible to them. Exactly. And uh, but yeah. that's that takes us into our next situation, and that is the unfortunate... Uh, part of the cod rise and fall to me this was the absolute fall of the cod cosplay stuff this is where i it wasn't even like really a declaration but i did declare it it was just more of an emotional separation from the cod cosplay community and that was the tragic passing of inquisitor ghost vincent um <laughs> Now I'm not really going to get into the who, why, what, where, what, like of why think the things happened to him that happened, like the, the series of events that led up to what happened with him. Cause there's hundreds of thousands of videos out there to go and watch and find out what happened day one of that stuff. And then the, the night of what happened, um, I'm, we're really just going to get our first person view of when we found out about it cuz it was really it was really such a sideways thing that it happened um mm -hmm. and it i don't know it's still it's it's still to me just crazy it's hard to wrap my brain around like everything was fine like a week before this happened yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, we had actually, actually uh, just, just like met each, each other uh, in IRL, mm -hmm. um, and we're having you know a grand old time, um, like two weeks prior. Also, didn't you talk to Vincent right before this too? Um, I did. So I had had small interactions with Vincent um, before he had disappeared. So funny, funny, not funny story. Um, but uh, me. Me and Vincent had small interactions. I had followed him after seeing his videos come up uh, quite a bit. And uh, he had messaged me uh, on, because uh, we had become mutuals, and he had messaged me, and he was like, oh, my gosh. He's like, I love your videos. Like, I, I can't believe you followed me. And I'm like, you know, we went back and forth about how, you know, we would love to meet each other one day and that, you know, what, I, I like what you're doing. It's very different. And, and it was just a very wholesome interaction. And he had actually... And I don't know if I uh, remember telling you this, but uh, on my Instagram account, I had gotten a message from a Teskio tattoo months prior to finding out about who Inquisitor Ghost was. And it was actually him um, on his tattoo account. And he had messaged me and he had been like, I really, you know, I love your content. I really want to tattoo you someday. So he was just always a very just nice person at that time i had no idea that that's who he was um because he didn't really have anything posted about him being inquisitor no artwork or anything like that um but we had had small conversation i'm not going to say that you know me and him were the best of friends but every interaction i had was very positive 
That's wild. I didn't know he reached out wanted to tattoo you. That's nuts. Mm-hmm. Damn. Um, yeah. yeah. So, like, I, I had less interaction with him. I think I saw maybe two or three of his videos in my For You page, and then that was it. Like, I'm like, oh, this person's doing an Inquisitor, like if Ghost was an Inquisitor in Star Wars. Um, so I'm like, okay. Mm-hmm. I just kept scrolling. Like, I, like okay. Um, but it was, I can't even remember exactly. Like, I can't go day by day. But I remember yeah. opening TikTok and seeing Keegan's Masks video where she called him out and said what she had said. And it didn't sit right with me whatsoever. But I felt deep down in my soul, I'm like, I need to say something, but I also need to wait for more information to come out. Because yes. what he was accused of doing is a very, very, very serious thing. Um, obviously, it wasn't true. But um, what was, what was, I, I don't think I ever got your side of when you first saw Keegan's video. So funny enough, I had, me and Vincent had become mutuals and maybe like a couple weeks later, I had seen that his account was gone. And at this time, I had no idea that there was any sort of accusations. I actually was afraid that he had blocked me. I I don't know, my brain instantly goes to, did he not like one of my videos? Or like, does he not think I'm as cool as he thought I was? And um, I, you know, I just saw that he had disappeared. I had no idea. It wasn't until maybe a week before the event that I saw, maybe it was like a week or two. Um, that I saw Keegan's video, and because then it wasn't just Keegan talking about it, it was a bunch of others where it was like, and okay, now it's like unavoidable because now everyone's talking about this. Um, my first interaction was the same as yours, where it was like, okay, there's really not enough here. Like, I feel like, and why is only you know half of this screenshot being shown? Like, where's the rest of the conversation? Um, it, it was, was to, to me, me, it was, was very odd, odd from the start, start when I was, I, I am also an overanalyzer. So I was like, like I'm, I'm not going, going to say left or right. right. I need just to see more. Exactly. And it, it's just like, it makes you feel like you need to go back and be like, Hey, I, yo, know, everybody needs to just chill until we get more information. Obviously Keegan, <sighs> was not equipped to have the power that she had and to say the things that she said and to and to and to do and go about what she did the way she went about it that's that's just that's just the facts um Indeed. and so i remember seeing that and then i remember i think we had did we chat about it a little bit before we, we 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 did. did. I, I think we were gaming one day, and I was like, "Hey, did you hear about this?" And that's when we kind of both were like, "You were you said you're feeling," and I'm like, "Oh, it was like a breath of fresh air because I was like, oh, okay, someone else is also thinking that this is weird. Like something someone else is also on the same page." But we both, I know that I was like, I can't. I can't speak on it yet because there's just not enough here. I'm not going to go, I'm not going to raise my pitchforks, but I'm also not going to, you know, lay them down either. So um, it was, I remember us talking about it very briefly um, as to us both agreeing that there just was not enough and it wasn't incriminating. What was said wasn't incriminating enough. Exactly. Uh. So then we get to the night of the stream of Mm -hmm. Vincent popping up on the for you on the for you page. And I don't think there was a single call of duty cosplayer or person that didn't know what was going on. I can't really remember what I was doing at the time, but I know we, you and I were talking back and forth and, and that from that night for the next, however many months it was, it was, Day in, day out, talking about that situation. 
Um, mm-hmm. How? I'm so, sure, yeah, you know what I'm trying. So to say. I remember, I remember it was mid. I remember it was midday, and I remember I was actually getting home from the uh, the gym, and I was talking to my partner um, because I had seen that he was back, and I'm like, oh, he's back, and he's live, and. Uh, so I didn't, I didn't tell, I haven't told anybody this other than like a few people, but I did watch the live. I was in there watching. And um, I was very confused as to what I was seeing. It, to me, it looked like a hallway. I had no idea what I was looking at. Um, but I was evaluating the situation. Um, and, um, you know, I was looking at his caption, um, which I don't feel like anybody talked about, um, but it was... Uh, Latin for basically God knows all, and it was um, the, yeah, and it was a uh, sad the sad music that that was just on the loop, and um, I remember thinking it was a hallway, and I'm waiting for him to come out, like I'm waiting for him to maybe you know sit down and address what's going on, and uh, I think at the time I had gotten home and I had I had messaged you, and I remember we were like something's. Something's not right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I think like two or three hours had passed and I was kind of going in and out of the live because I, nothing was happening. And um, so finally at one point is when I realized that it wasn't a hallway and it was a glass door. And I was, you know, it was surreal watching what I thought in my brain to be a hallway was actually an open window, you know, a, a glass door that was then being broken down because that was when they had discovered him and EMTs had come in. Um, and that's when I, we instantly started our conversation as to being like, this is so much deeper than what, you know, we expected it to be. And um, that night, and then it was, cause I had that live was about three hours long and um, I remember seeing, you know, because all I wanted to know was, like, what happened? Is he okay? What's, you know, is, is, is it staged? Like, what's yeah, going yeah. on? And because, you know, I'm not going to say that wasn't uh, it, at times because of, you know, how skeptical we were about just everything going on. I, at first, I was like, was this a, a play? You know, basically, like, what's going on? And that's when there was a whole back and forth. You got some some people that are saying he's okay. You got some people that are saying he's stable. You got some people that are saying, no, he's not. And I was, I was like, all right, I, moving on from this, um, you know, basically what took place. And I know me and you were, I mean, every day it was like, as soon as I woke up, it was instantly on TikTok as to what's the update, what's going on. Yeah. And it was us messaging back and forth for, for oh, God, I think it was like a week <laughs> every day. Um, but um, it was it was a time and everything. It still feels surreal. Yes. But it was a it was a it was definitely a. Um, a very somber time. It was like I I couldn't I couldn't even go to work once you know we you know we found out that he did not make it. Um, it was like working was hard because I'm like sitting here and I'm like, you know this this easily avoidable thing happened to somebody because people jumped the gun and it's just. Oh, it's still it, it, in my brain to this day. It's just such a, it's, I, it's a sad story to tell, but it's a, um, it's also a very enlightening story to tell because there's so much to learn and to take from it. Um, so, oh yeah, I'll let you go on to the what you were feeling around that time. No, it, it, the exact same. I think. I think I. I would. I was, obviously I was right there with you because, like you said, it was about a week straight, and I feel like it was more than that because, it, obviously, the stuff with with him had happened, and during the live. There, Keegan, 
and several other people, the Bravo zero seven. And I don't, I don't care. Like even at the time when I made my video, like addressing the situation, I like, I'm like, I don't care. I'll, I'll name people, but mm -hmm. like Keegan had made a video saying that she's the TikTok Batman and she's going to go after these, these creepers. And she was like, she, it was after one of her false call outs that she got flack that she decided yeah. to like, she was like, I'm going to take a break for a minute. And I'm just watching this stuff and I, I wanted to comment so bad, but there was just something holding me back to like, I need to wait for everything to come to fruition first. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember seeing her video post and her being like me deciding to take a break, seeing that inquisitor ghost is back live. And the yeah. disgusting thing of how many, like, how many people were actually like, hey, yo, like her own fan base was like, hey, yo, Keegan, chill, dude. Like he actually may be gone. Like he may have done something on live. It, 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 it was, it was, it, yeah, like, like not, not even to interrupt, interrupt it, it was, but, but like it was insane because she is uploading these things while he is, we don't know if he's deceased in the left side of the screen or not at this time. And, uh, you know, at the time it's, more than likely he was and um that just the i i this is what i think about this is what i think about and this is maybe like morbid of me but i think about them opening his phone and just seeing these videos that he's tagged in that are just you know like from keegan and, and bravo 7 basically calling him this disgusting thing and um even, Even when, when he's, you know, passed and gone, gone. It, it was, it, it, it still, still breaks my heart to this day, just thinking about that and how that was happening mm -hmm. at that time. It's, oh God, like vile. It, well, I want to, I want to start trucking past like the, 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 the occurrence and the more so of the, uh, if the next little thing is the fall, which was, highly i don't want to say highly respected because they really weren't creating content that was in my eyes respectable or that really mm -hmm. helped the community or anything like that because it was all fake and for clout so um the biggest thing was that keegan obviously ran off tail tucked between her legs went to her instagram and the thing that sucks the most, right? The thing that sucks the most is this didn't even just affect, obviously, Vincent, Vincent's family. But I didn't know until I believe Roma had mentioned this or reported on it that uh, Keegan had a twin sister and people were going after the sister and the sister had made a video saying, I completely understand that you are all angry. I'm not her, but if you need to get your anger out on someone, fire away. Like, oh, yeah. I'm like, how do you, how are you so cowardly? And her apology being like, I didn't say anything. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. I was just making a call out video with the information that I was given. Took no responsibility, no accountability for anything. Um, and then just ducked like, I'm like it, it affects your family too. And you're like the internet was doing its thing. And I don't think it was unexpected when, when it had been found out that a, he was innocent and B that he had passed that the internet was going to do exactly what the internet does. Um, then going over to Bravo stuff. And I'm going to try to make this brief because I don't want to dwell too much on this, this part, <laughs> but Oh, excuse me. Bravo was right there riding Keegan's coattails the entire way for likes, for follows, for views, all that stuff, claiming that he was also a TikTok Batman going after creepers and went so far. I think Bravo made four or five videos about Inquisitor, first uh, damning him, then all just a, a bunch of other videos. Just it was weird because. The video would go halfway, I hate Inquisitor, Inquisitor's a terrible person, and then the second half was, but if he's innocent, da-da-da-da-da-da. Um, mm -hmm. 
And then it slowly became, and also Bravo saying the stuff about Inquisitor needing to be in a psych ward and locked up and that he's crazy and that this is a manipulation tactic and that he's faking it and that he's that um, Bravo himself is an EMT, so he knows that it was faked by what he saw on the video and all that stuff. Mm. And that was the stuff that was just burning my biscuits because I'm like, and rightfully so, the internet was like defending Inquisitor in the comments to the point where Stephen Riley started deleting video after video and video and comments and turning off comments. And then inevitably, inevitably, that's how it's, I can't remember, deactivated the account and dipped. Tito mm. is oh. a different, I don't want to get into the story of Tito because Tito just still doesn't understand. Tito, for those of you who don't know, who don't know Tito's back and still trying after having a sit down FaceTime call with Roma R Army, Chloe Roma, outing himself, admitting to everything, and not only trying to pass the buck to his his uh 17 year old girlfriend which to me personally i still don't feel was real um but trying to pass the bug to someone else to then coming back and trying to make content again and, and then making a discord saying hey if you want the truth if you want the full whatever join the discord and i'll, I'll tell you everything i it's like dude just stay away um mm -hmm. i don't mean to steamroll past this but that was really the the slippery slope of um the first of things that that just came out after this right that that yeah. Yeah, things just got worse with the cod cosplay community um yeah it came to people pretending and faking doing certain things for attention um, and that's where we'll get to the toxicity and the community implosion. Um, it felt like after this, like I had said earlier in the podcast, that everybody, it felt like every other week or every other day, there was some random person who would pop up with a selfie video saying, this is not acceptable in the COD community. We're now losing another person, or this person's getting bullied, and this person's getting accused, and this person is now saying this and that and this and that, and we need to band together as a community. I'm like, yeah, the community had been failed when the stuff with Vincent happened. It had been failed. I don't, I don't think it'll ever recover. Um, because I just don't feel like there's really anybody that, like, I don't feel that there's anybody who is really trying to, I don't know. It, I, I just I just don't trust, and the COD cosplay community don't go hand in hand after the stuff with Vincent. Is what I'm yeah. really, is what I'm really trying to say. I have there are several people within the COD cosplay community that I trust. Um, but when it comes down to it, I feel that there's a lot of them and there is a certain breed of, <laughs> of cosplayers <laughs> or of, of the people in the COD community. <sighs> and it seems around that group of, of people within the community, drama always flares up. And it's a day or two thing, then they go dark, and then they're friends again, or whatever. But it seems like legit high school drama, and spoiler alert, it's because a lot of them are fecking high schoolers pretending to be 20-plus-year-old <laughs> people. Yeah. Um, your opinion on, if you would like to go back to the, the Keegan Bravo stuff, or if you want to talk about these, this select group of cosplayers. Or your, or your feelings on just how you feel that what's happened to the COD community, cosplay community, and if it can ever go back to what it once was. Well, so, so when, when you, you say there, there was a the falling, falling out, out um, you know, know after, after Vincent had happened, happened like, like there was an actual fall, fall of the cosplay community. community. I, I, I was involved in the community, um, like, like not, not like heavily, 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 but like, you know, 
people knew of me and I knew of people and I interacted with certain people. Um, and I had heard, so before it was the night I, so business life had happened. I went to work that night and in this group, which I, I will keep, I will keep that to myself. But in this, in this group, there was some vile things um, that were said about if uh, Vincent either survived or made it. Mm -hmm. And I instantly, without second guessing, removed myself from this group um, because to me it was like, I can't believe you guys don't understand the severity of this situation. <laughs> like, yeah. So to, I, I had actually physically removed myself from the community that night, and I hadn't gone back ever since because of the fact that I'm like, I don't want to say there's a lot of snakes, but there's a lot of snakes, and there's a lot of um, just people just... Some, someone says jump and they say, okay, how high? Um, no one really thinks for themselves, um, which I believe has to do with a lot of this uh, group of people, um, you know, uh, <laughs> they like, like how, how you said they are definitely young. Um, and me and you will talk about it. We've talked about it before where, um, Call of Duty is a rated, is it M? Yes, it's, it's M. Which, which is, is for 18, 18 and up, right? Yes. And so we always make this comment as to like, though though people can do what they want to do and kids can play what they want to play, if, if, the, if the parent is okay with whatever they're doing, it's made for mature audiences and i say that loosely um so it's just these are the groups of people that lack that maturity and have jumped on a hype train that was the popularity of ghost cosplayers um and uh, it's it's like I, that could go so many different directions with these with these people um, that I don't even know which direction to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's I don't know. I, a lot of it to me feels like it's 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 a uh, it's a it's a subject that they find that it's trendy, right? It's not that they really care. It's that it's it'll bring them clout. It'll bring them likes. It'll bring them views. There was a, another situation a little bit after this that we had talked about and uh, for, for uh, I guess, sensitivity's sake, I'm not going to mention the person because this person actually is underage. Um, that said person had faked uh, an attempt and faked it for attention. And it came out of left field, and people were doing the thing. They're up in arms, and they're like, "We just lost another person. So and so committed last night." Blah blah blah. And long story short, it turned out this person was in fact fourteen years old. Fourteen years Ooh. old, pretend pretending to be a twenty three year old, going Gosh. into the, having actual adults go to bat for them. And we had said about this group of people the subsection of the cod cosplay community that it's the blind leading the blind that it is it to me it's like it's the worst part of any fandom i've been a part of and good god i'm part of the star wars fandom so <laughs> it's it's just wild and it's to the fact that as an adult if you th like if you think something's not right, you see something like that, you're like, hmm, well, what's going on here? It's the internet. You got to, you can't take it at face value, really. Like, you have to, you have, you have to investigate, especially when it's something so serious as what happened. And, um, all these other people were just, 
going into said person's life. Because wildly enough, this person apparently attempted and then the next day they're up and jumping around and doing a TikTok live and then making videos clowning on everyone for thinking that it was fake. And it, it, it nobody like people started questioning it and then the blind leading the blind would just go after the people who were questioning it. And that's where I get to the toxicity where obviously kind of turning on a dime here you have the elitism you have just the people being rude you have the people who are think they're superior to everybody else because they've got name brand 511 gear whatever gatekeeping gear things gatekeeping masks gatekeeping everything but you also have the people who will blindly attack anybody because their favorite creator said so and granted that's not something that's just exclusive to cod but it also lets you know some people's actual ages. Yeah. Um, but ugh, that. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was kind of. Oh, sorry. I was kind of steamrolling that. Um, the community implosion that all falls in to the same thing. It's it's extremely unfortunate that that this was even a situation when all. Vincent was trying to do was spread happiness and have a good time on the internet with some friends. Yeah. Um, oh, I also want to mention too, that I did mention in a comment because uh, people had said that inquisitor was getting his own modern warfare skin. Do you remember this, this part of it skull? Oh yes, do, I do. Do you remember this part of it? While I think it would have been cool. I had, mentioned in a comment saying i don't think it's going to happen simply because they need disney sign off and yeah I, and i it's funny it's really and i, I when everything was happening i think it was it was that beacon of light it was that beacon of hope that someone was going to get even the smallest amount of something that they deserved which would have been bare minimum and it was, I think, that one light that everyone was looking for. But when you mentioned, you're like, this isn't easy because you've got Call of Duty and then you've also got Disney. Um, you know, they, Disney doesn't, Disney does not give up easily. Um, and uh, nor does Disney... <laughs> Disney would more than likely not let their character or their, um, how do you say, uh, image of their character being used in a shooter game. That's just not Disney. Um, so when you brought that up, it actually made me think, because I was that person that was like, oh, this would be awesome. Like, this is, this, this, he deserves this. And uh, it was, when you mentioned that, I was like, oh. And it made me think. So, well, and that's the thing is like, I'm like, I, I understand that the good guys need to win. You know what I mean? But it, the fact that it was one person who conveniently did renders for VR, who claimed that it, they got accidentally invited to a discord server for the call of duty creation team. And they saw that they, that this, like, a week late after this had happened, when there was no investigation, there was no clean, clear cut, definitive answer as to what had actually happened with him. There was no real confirmation from his dad or anything like that. That somehow Activision had struck a deal that they were going to create a skin for him. I had just mentioned, I'm like, it's just a little odd that. You're the only one who saw something and then they kicked you from it and you didn't take screenshots or you, you did take a screenshot, but a lot of stuff was redacted because you didn't want to get anybody fired, but yeah. you run to the internet to let them know that this is a thing. I don't. And to this day, like if it happens, I will eat my words with a fork and a spoon, but <laughs> it's, <sighs> 
like I understand, but that's the other thing where I'm just like the the toxicity of it all is just lying for views and for attention, and it's the internet. That's 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 the norm, but it's extremely unfortunate that everyone's knee jerk reaction is to take everybody else's head off. Um, but uh, trying to end on a happy note. <laughs> Um, it's just, I, I do wish that it would go back to its former glory. Just having fun, being able to have fun. Like I, I, I did cultivate a pretty fun community. There's, there are people obviously who have moved on, who are doing their lot, who are doing their thing that I don't really talk to anymore, but it was, it was such a good time and a fun time that, it's just unreal to believe that just one day everything switches. Yeah. I don't know. Any, do you have any closing remarks, Skull? Um, I, I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, there, um, despite, despite there, there being, being a lot, lot of, of you know, you know, there, there, you know, there, there was a fall, and, and, and I, I don't think it will be able, able to rebuild, rebuild itself. Um, there, I did get a lot out of the community when it wasn't toxic. Um, I, you know, have developed a excellent, you know, you know, friendship with you, and I have made some, you know, some friendships that are, I'm still very active with to this day. I, oh, sorry, I'm choking on myself. Um, that I have. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I've met a lot, lot of cool people. people. I've, I've learned a lot, lot of things. things. I've networked. Um, you, you know, know I have, have traveled all because of this community, community um, when, when it was, you know, when, when it was, was fun. fun. And, and um, when, when it was, was just people, people I don't know, know just, just having, having a good time, time being themselves, themselves, being artistic, artistic being creative. And I just, I, it's, it, it makes, makes me sad, sad that, that I just don't see it much anymore. And then when you do, you like, like hold, hold on to it, it as tight as you can when, when someone does something different. different. And, and um, I, I, I guess, guess my closing, closing statement is not even, even it's, it's, it's going to sound not even like a bag, but just kind of like, I just kind of want everybody to think about, you know, um, what, what that, that was, was like, like, like what, what did you feel, feel when you first like started, you know, in this community? community. Like, like, what did you want to do? Have, have you gotten, gotten too far from it just to, just to, just to appease the masses? masses? Have, have you, you, you know, are you following, following trends, trends just to get, get you know, the, uh, the traction and to hopefully hit the algorithm, you know, but not really having fun with it? Like, you, you, you just, just, you gotta, gotta find, find, and this is, I mean, even with every community, community like, you've just, just gotta, gotta remember the reason why you did it, and, and you know, and remember, remember to keep, keep it fun. fun. This, this is, is supposed to be fun. fun. This, this is, is supposed to be a creative outlet. outlet. And, and um, it, it just, just uh, uh, it sucks just not seeing it like that as of right now. I can only hope that it could heal itself, but, uh, to do, to do that, that you, you have, have to have, have people, people that understand, understand you know what, what they're, they're doing, doing and why, why they're doing what they're doing, doing so. so yeah yeah well said i agree be good people keep yourself safe um yep. and keep your friends safe god damn it um well, that'll do it for this one. Uh, who knows? Maybe maybe Skull will be back for another one when I actually get some stuff with the podcast figured out. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, thank you, Skull, for being here. It's been a party. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for, for inviting, inviting me. me. Um, I, I had, had fun. fun. It's, 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 a, it's a fun, fun subject. subject. Um, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know. It, it, it was it nice, nice to talk, talk about, about it from, from the very beginning, beginning to, to the, the current, current standing. standing. Yeah, just the reflection of everything. It's just like, damn, yo, that was all within a year. A year. <laughs> a year. <laughs> Why, Why do I, do I feel, feel like, like we've lived, lived lifetimes in, in one year? year? Because we bloody have. And we will continue living <laughs> until the end of time. Actually, I don't know. I might have a heart attack. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> anyway I'll see everybody in the goddamn next one. Jesus.